Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. We are unboxing our crickets today. Yes, if your cricket is still sitting in the box somewhere, the back of your closet, tucked away, no longer. We're going to crack it open today. Today is a full beginner cricket tutorial, step by step. So if you are looking to get started with your cricket, let's get started. I do have a video, the same video format for Cricut Explorer, so I will link that right up here, but whichever Cricut machine you have or whichever version of the Cricut maker you might have, this is still super relevant to you. So let's get right into it. I'm going to show you how to get started, what comes in the box, and let's just get going. If you are an experienced crafter and you're watching this and you want to give any advice in the comments down below, that would be amazing and I'm sure any crafting beginners would really appreciate it. And if you are brand new to Cricut and maybe the steps are too fast for you, you need a little bit more clarification or you missed a step, feel free to either rewind and rewatch that part, do it along with me. And if you need extra clarification or any questions, please leave them in the comments down below and I would absolutely love to answer them. I will answer every single question that I get in these comments because I really wanna help you get started. So enough talking, let's get into it and start opening up this box. So. This is the Cricut Maker, not the brand new one. This is the one just before that. So in the box, I actually opened this up already on a video and I also got a bundle with it, which I filmed in a separate video. This one is more a tutorial type of video, so I will leave that one up here as soon as it's up, but the bundle unboxing is going to be tomorrow. It says, let's get started. To begin, go to cricut.com slash setup. So as I'm talking here, if you want to do it along with me, just open a, another tab, type in cricut.com slash setup, and then you can go ahead and download that onto whatever device you are using. Now, if you are using a tablet, your smartphone, or something like that instead of a computer, if you're also using a Chromebook, those things, you actually need to go into the App Store and download Cricut Design Space that way. So the software that you use for Cricut is called Cricut Design Space. I'm sure if you just type in Cricut in the App Store, it will pop right up and make sure you download that. Keep going. So materials for your first project. This comes with the box when you order your Cricut and I think it's really handy. It says open me first. So we're gonna do that. Plug in and power on your fabulous new Cricut machine. I love how there's little cards. Wow, this is awesome. Get connected. So like I said, just go to Cricut.com. We'll walk you through every step. So they will do step-by-step -step on how to do it make a little something which we're going to do today during setup we'll make a practice project with materials in the box which is always super fun it comes included and then bookmark this page cricut.com slash create you'll find every resource you need to master your new machine enjoy so that's what it says in there i love that i'll definitely be using these little cue cards later on. So I'm going to put these down here for now. This is for the Cricut Maker, right? So if you have the Explorer that you're unboxing, it's going to look a little bit different, but we have one of their blades that are in here and the other one should be in the machine already. So that's awesome. We're not going to be using that blade today though. There's a little welcome sheet here, a little welcome book ready to get started. So this is going to give you a bunch of instructions. If you are someone that really likes to read to learn, you know, it has a whole diagram of each part and what it does, which is awesome. We can refer back to that in a little bit. At the back, it has some useful links for you as well. I'm a very visual learner, which is why I make YouTube tutorials showing you how to do this and on TikTok, because I learn by seeing and doing. In here, we have a Cricut pen. So this you can actually put into your Cricut machine and it will draw out for you. It's super cool. So we will get into that in another video, but it comes with a little pen and it comes with the rotary blade cap, which is awesome. So I have the rotary blade down there. That's just a little protective cap. Now we have our cord to plug in our Cricut machine to our computer or laptop. It has the little USB port for that. So that's what was in that little box there. But, oh, okay, I see. So in this little envelope, it has two pieces of cardstock. So I guess that is what they want us to do for our first project. So we could do a little mini cardstock project when we start off. 
And I think we're also going to do a vinyl project today because I'm assuming if you have a Cricut, you're probably going to be interested in how to do vinyl. And for this video, we're going to do adhesive vinyl, not heat transfer vinyl. So I do have other videos on heat transfer vinyl and I can do a new one with that. But for today's video, it's just going to be adhesive vinyl. This is what my Cricut looks like. I already took it out of the protective cover. This is the Cricut Maker, super cute. And I will move this box aside and we can go over it in a minute. Let me just move this over. Inside this box, we also have two mats. One is the light grip mat and one is for fabrics. Now, I was a little disappointed because they are pretty bent, but I'm going to try to flatten them out. Over time, they'll probably just go back. As an experienced crafter, I use the green standard grip mat the most. I feel like this is the most common mat that you will see people using, and this mat is 12 by 12. There are larger mats that are 12 by 24. They don't normally come included with it, maybe in a bundle if you purchase a bundle separately, but so this did not come in the box. This was something that I bought on top of it, a bundle on Cricut Design Space that came with some materials and extra mats. I also have mats for my previous crafting journey because I've had a Cricut machine for many years at this point. So this is the mat I normally use and we're going to be using for today's video. And then I will also be using the blue light grip mat that's going to come in the box for the cardstock project we'll be working on as well. And those mats are what you're going to put your vinyl on, your cardstock on, you know, whatever you're cutting out. And that's what loads into the machine to cut it out. So in here, we also have the power cable. Very handy dandy. Make sure you open everything because sometimes there are things underneath. I know you can't see part of my face. That's okay, you don't need to. We're just focusing on here. So this is the Cricut Maker. It opens up like this. You just lift this part up and then it's going to pop open. Now, if you just took it out of the box, you're going to want to remove this little foam piece. And if you can see right here, the blade is actually already in here. So the blade, the premium fine point blade that we're using to cut vinyl and cardstock and all that stuff, it's already in here, which is awesome. If you do want to know how to change out the blade, you just push this little part open. It's a clamp, there you go, open. You can lift it out and then close it back up again. So that's for that. This little port here is for that pen I was showing you. So you just do the same thing. You open the clamp, you put the pen in without the lid, close it. And then if you have it set up on Cricut Design Space to draw, which we'll do in another video, then it will go ahead and do that for you. Awesome. So that's kind of the basics there where the blade goes and stuff. You can open up this and store things like your tools. You can store little blades in here and whatever you want. They also have, let me close this for a moment. Okay. They also have these two little spots here. One's a little deeper than the other. So you could put some tools in here or something really small. And then over here we have the power button. This little arrow is to load your mat, so it will flash to tell you when to load your mat in, which we'll get into in a moment. The C, the little Cricut logo, is actually the kind of like the play button, the go button, if you want. So that will flash when it's ready to cut out and you can get cutting. And this pause button, it comes in useful if you're cutting and let's say something pulls up, maybe something comes off of your mat or it's breaking or you realize, oh, I forgot to do something. You can hit the pause button. It will stop the cut there. You can either unload it or take a moment to go do what you need to do, come back and then just press it to keep going. So it's going to pause it at the point that it's at and then you can either cut it completely, cancel it and just unload it or you can continue it with where it's at. So that's a really helpful tip. So back here is where the cords are going to go in. So this one is for the USB port. So you're gonna plug this in and either plug in the USB to your computer or whatever you want. And then we also have the power cord, which is just going to go in there. Now, if you have the new Cricut Maker, the Cricut Maker 3, the cords are a little bit different. Um, so I do want to give you that little bit of information. It's still the same kind of setup, if that makes sense, but the cords just look a little bit different for the plugins. 
Now these cords are pretty much the same look as the Cricut Explorer, which is awesome because I have used that for many years, so I know exactly how it goes. And something else I wanted to show you, which is kind of a cool feature. Right here, if you see at the bottom, there's a little USB port and you can actually charge things in. So if your Cricut is plugged in, you could plug in something with the USB, charge your phone, I've seen people do, like if they're doing a project or something. So that can come in super handy depending on what device you're using, but there are limitations to what it can charge, I would say, but for most things, it could charge it, which is a really cool little feature that it has. So that's the basics of it. Hopefully not too scary, right? Like it's pretty simple. So if you can just do at least that step, you've come a long way already, you know? A lot of people say the Cricut is still in the box. It wasn't that scary. We can do it. So the next step we're going to do is plug it in. So I'm going to get the power cord first. So we are setting up our power cable and then our connection to our computer. Now I do wanna mention if you're using a laptop, a tablet, something that doesn't have a USB port, or just you want to do Bluetooth in general because it can come in super handy, you can absolutely do that. You just have to enable Bluetooth on your device, so on your computer. I did post a video about that and I can definitely do another one if you need, but make sure Bluetooth is set up on your device and then you will just have to make sure your Cricut machine is powered on and then wait a moment it should show up on your available bluetooth devices you select it and then it will pair to your cricut machine so you're able to do that even on your laptop that way you don't have to have this cord connected but for today i'm going to connect it to my laptop because i think that will be very helpful for anyone using a computer that isn't too sure about how to do bluetooth or what bluetooth even is you know it can get complicated so we're going to make it super simple so that is where it goes. If you're not too sure, I just match up the shape. It's kind of blurry, sorry. The shapes are very different. So you just match it to the one. This is the power cable that I'm plugging in now. So the power cable, obviously, if you're in a different country, it might look a little bit different, but in North America, ours look like this. So I'm going to plug this into the wall. That comes with this large little box. It kind of looks like a laptop charger. So I'm going to plug that into the wall. And then this one is going to go into my laptop computer, into the USB port, kind of like a USB stick or something. So that's all I need to do to get my Cricut machine on. Pretty simple, right? We're going to get started on our first project. So I'm going to open my Cricut. If you have the Cricut Explorer, there is a button that says open. You can just press on that and it'll open up and we're going to power on. And when you power on, it's going to do this little thing, which you'll see in a moment here. Don't worry, that's totally normal. It's supposed to do that, so don't freak out if it's making a loud noise. And we're good to go. So now I'm going to hop on over to my computer and get started. I have my computer set up here, and my Cricut machine is turned on. So now I'm just going to plug in the USB into my computer, like so. And I'm going to share my computer screen so that you can see what I'm doing as well. I can do a video specifically using a phone or a tablet, things like that, if you need to know how to download it that way, um, we can definitely do that. So let me just get logged in here and then I'm going to share my screen with you. I also have coffee, much needed thing. I'm going to first show you the Cricut Design Space where you're going to pop over. So let's record that part. So like I mentioned, what we're going to do is go to cricut.com um, slash setup. Perfect. So it says, glad you're here. Select a product type to set up. So I have, sorry, I have a little pop-up. I have a Cricut machine, so I'm going to press on that. And I have a Cricut Maker, so I'm going to press on that one. Then you can go ahead and read the terms of use, privacy policy, and I'm going to download now. So you could either open the app if you are on your phone or your tablet and hit download now. Perfect, so let's do that. In your downloads folder, double click the file named Cricut Design Space install and follow the on-screen prompts. 
so it's not going to let me show you the downloads folder unfortunately on my computer for privacy reasons it does not show my folder for reference i'm using a windows computer so i'm going to double click on the cricut install for design space now i already have it on my computer um, from using my cricut explorer but let's see what it does here for me so the options it gives me are product setup and sign in so let's just click on product setup to see perfect so you're going to create your own cricut id which is kind of your account that you're going to log in to be able to design your projects, connect to your Cricut, and cut things out. And you do not have to pay for this. It is free. There is a version you could pay for called Cricut Access. You get access to their fonts, to their images, and things like that. But honestly, I've used Cricut for five years now, never needed the access. So go ahead and type in your email. And I'm going to do that. Enter password. So let's make up password for my last name. Okay, and I'm going to select where I'm from. So I'm going to select Canada. Um, you could send me big discounts. Agree. I'm just going to agree and create Cricut ID. Perfect. So again, it's going to get me to select the machine. And which machine do I have? Well, today I have the Cricut Maker, this one here clear 10 inches so that's a really important part with your Cricut you don't want it directly against the wall because the way that it's going to cut out it's going to put the mat inside and spit it out the back a little bit so it can cut out so you need to leave space at the back for the mat to go out and back in so it says to leave about 10 inches or 25 centimeters away from any wall so you can still have it like on this against the wall just pull it more towards the edge or a table or something like that so the next thing is plug in your Cricut maker or Cricut machine which we just did plug it into the wall outlet and power it on use included usb cord to connect your cricut maker to the computer which we did otherwise you could set up bluetooth which we will talk about in another video updating so let's get you the latest and greatest features awesome the update is done that was quick your cricut maker is activated and set up awesome okay so add a cricut maker to your cricut id so i'm going to do that i'm going to select and agree to Cricut Terms of Use, Privacy Policy. Go ahead and read that if you want to. Um, and we're done. So now it's going to give you Cricut access, start free trial or no thanks. The whole start free trial thing, like just use the free version. Honestly, I'm just gonna save you the time. There are so many other websites you can get free fonts and free things for, so just use the free version. You could pay for the Cricut access if you want, but for $12.99 a month, there are a lot better places to use, just my own opinion. I'm going to do instead of start free trial, I'm just gonna hit no things. So let's do a test cut. It's going to give you these options here. So I think I want to do the sunflower. We're going to go next. Place small cardstock on the top left corner of the mat. So let me grab my mat and really show you what I'm doing. So on your mat, there is this protective cover you do want to keep this because when you're done with the mat you're going to put it back on top to protect the mat the mat is sticky this one is light grip but there's standard grip and a strong grip one there are also fabric ones and all those things but the most typical ones are those so we're going to set this aside so that you have it for later so it is sticky see and the reason for that is the material you're cutting the material you're cutting is going to stick to it to make it easier to cut out so we have a couple of different options we could make a little cute card out of this so maybe we'll do that so i'm going to place small cardstock on the top left corner of my mat so on the mat it actually shows the numbers so think of it kind of like a ruler i know it's a little hard to see with the lighting and everything i can try to bring you a little closer if you need but you're going to line it up with the numbers. Also, I'm using a blue piece of cardstock on a blue mat, so <laughs> I'm doing my best. It's a shame this mat is so bent. The mat is super flexible, which I like, but it's kind of bent in the wrong direction. Okay, so we have it onto the mat. We're gonna skip to the next step and see what it tells us. 
confirmed the blade is set up in clamp B. Yes, we checked it is set up. We, we did that at the beginning. And push mat under the guides towards the rollers. Is put it in with the guides here. On either side, we have these little guides, and it's just to push the mat. So I'm going to lightly place the mat against this metal bar. And right here, it's flashing to prompt me to load it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. There we go. Perfect. So I can let go now, it's in there. If it doesn't load properly, you can just press the arrow to unload it and try again. And now it's prompting me to cut. Press the flashing go button on the machine. So once it's done, it will kind of spit it partially back out. The arrow will be flashing and on your Cricut design space, it will let you know it's time to unload the mat. So right now it says test cut is complete unload. So I'm going to press this little flashing arrow. It just spits it out. Make sure to just support it because it's going to spit it out. Unload your mat. The best way is to flip it over. Put your hand down on your decal. Let's put the mat away from the decal. The reason for this is your mat is super flexible, but if you just pull your cardstock off, it's going to curl your cardstock kind of like this mat is curled, and then you're going to end up with a really flimsy curled cardstock or whatever. So this is what it went ahead and cut out, which is super cute. So I could go ahead and make a little card out of this if I wanted and add this on there. I'd probably cut out some more little things to add to it. So that could be something fun that we do and add to on another project. But I really wanted to show you using vinyl today. And it's a shame because we just did a test cut and it didn't really show you how to properly set your materials and things like that. So I feel like that might be where the intimidation part is. It doesn't properly show you how to do it. Okay, so what we're going to do is start designing a project. I think I'm going to make a little decal for the top of my Cricut machine. That's always a really fun and easy one to do. And if you don't want to add it to a Cricut machine, feel free to grab a, a mug, a glass, you know, if you want to add it to I don't know, anywhere, anything you want, whatever you want to add a decal to, go ahead and do that. And we're just going to make it super simple today. So the thing we're going to do is hit new project up here. And it's going to take us here to this kind of grid that we have going on. So essentially this grid right here along the top and the bottom kind of mimics your mat a little bit. It definitely goes a lot bigger so you can zoom in and zoom out here. But Essentially, it's supposed to mimic your mat. So for today's video, I'm trying to keep it super simple and not intimidating. So what I'm going to first show you is this text box. You're going to go ahead and press on that and type out whatever word or name you would like to add to your decal. So for me, I'm going to add trebuchet. Sorry, that's the name that I kind of go by. And so I'm going to go ahead and I want to change the font a little bit. So okay. up here, we have the fonts. Just press on this. And how the fonts work is here it's going to show you a bunch of fonts that are ex like priced. So $4.99 and you have to pay for those. But the little trick is just press on system instead and it will show you all of the fonts that are free to use on Cricut without the paid membership. So these are all the fonts you could use. Some of these I have downloaded on separate websites and then uploaded it into my Cricut Design Space, which I can show you how to do in a separate video. But I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. So go ahead and select a font that you would like. Normally I really like Times New Roman, which is a weird font to like, but I think it looks really cute. So I think we're gonna go ahead and do Times New Roman. Now I'm just going to tweak it a little bit so you could press this unlock button and that makes it so that you can drag it up or down and around. Otherwise, if it's locked, it's just going to stay that same dimensions and then just change the size. It's not going to stretch the font. I like the font to be a little bit like this, so I like that. And then I'm going to press on this images right here. Now, these ones, it's going to show you a bunch of one that you can pay for. But if you go right here and select free, it's going to narrow it down to the free options. So 
There are a lot of different ones. You can narrow it down even more. So what I'm going to do is search. I'm going to type in um, Cricut, I think. Yes, this is what I wanted. I wanted to get a little, what they call Cricut Cutie. And it is the little mascot for Cricut. I think they're so cute. So I think I'm going to make probably this one. And you can see here it's free because I've selected the free button. So you can use this. Um, should I do that one? Or I'm just browsing to see if that's the one that I want to do. So cute. Okay, let's do that one. So I'm going to hit add to canvas. Perfect. And I'm just going to size it. So go ahead and take a ruler or whatever you have and measure it out to where you want it. So I think I can put it up here. I don't know. This is textured. Maybe not up here. Maybe down here. So I have up to three. Okay, perfect. So we have three and then this would not exceed it anyways. And I think my little Cricut Cutie is going to go right up here. So I have three and a half. Okay. So now I can go ahead and just adjust the sizing a little bit. So I do want to make them, I think, a couple different colors. So I think the Cricut Cutie, I'm going to make maybe like a little bit of a cute green or something. So I just went ahead and changed the color here. And this is telling my Cricut design space and my Cricut machine that I'm wanting to cut this out on two separate colors, which means it will be two separate cuts that I'm loading to separate mats and press make it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some vinyl. So with vinyl, there are a bunch of different kinds I'm trying to keep it super basic for today's video. So a couple ways they come are they could be in rolls like this or they could be in sheets like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it out on a sheet today. It's just the same thing just for the roll. You just have to unroll it to stick it on the mat. That's it. There's no other real difference. And then I'm going to go ahead and find a color that I like for my little Cricut cutie guy. Remove this plastic piece. Put it in a spot where it's not going to get dirty and destroyed. And then I'm going in with this color first because it's showing me on Cricut Design Space right now that the first thing that's being cut out is the word trebuchet, which I wanted in black. So it doesn't really matter what color you select on Cricut Design Space, you can just choose what color the vinyl or cardstock you're putting on your mat. doesn't make a difference. Um, it's just great for me. I'm a very visual person, so I like to edit the color on Cricut Design Space just so I can kind of remind myself. So you're going to go ahead, line it up, like I said, with the numbers on either side. This is a full sheet, and then the other one is a little bit of a scrap piece, so I'll show you how that works. And if you're using a roll, go ahead and do that. You could cut the roll here or sometimes you could have it hang down for the rest of the roll. Now what we're going to go ahead and on Cricut Design Space, if you just look at my screen here, I press continue. Now it's asking me to set base material. You could also browse all materials and you can either type in something or you can just scroll and see some options. So I'm going to press vinyl. And now with this one, what this means is default is there's a certain number or cut pressure set to each material option that it gave you. Now it's telling me to load tools and material. So what it means by that is um, this, because I don't have any other tools, the blade is already there. So again, we're going to put it into the guide. I'm going to load my mat, it's prompting me here. And now it's flashing and prompting me. It's a lot easier with the mat that is not there. to me to do that so I'm going to unload my mat and I'm going to turn it over like I said and hold down my vinyl with one hand and peel away my mat with the other. Now it's automatically going to prompt me to cut out the next color. I have a scrap piece you can see I've already used it. It was a full 12 by 12 but I've used a lot of it. So there are some ways to kind of make it line up but 
just go ahead and lay it on your mat the same way we did before and you can go ahead and cut this out now i guess i'll quickly really quickly show you something um the simple format so right here it says edit if you press on that it's going to show you what your mat this is like a digital version of what your mat should look like so it's showing you right now that this is going to cut out at the top of my mat right here so it shows you by the two to the three so that's kind of what it's telling me now let's say i need it to cut down here maybe i'm using a scrap or something i'm going to need to move this down and match the numbers with what's on my physical mat to what's on the digital mat there so that's a great kind of little preview window to do and take a look at i don't need to do that today because i have my material here but that's something i wanted to show you it's kind of the preview window or the little edit window to move things around so i can press done this is also vinyl so i don't need to change the material i can go ahead and load this into my machine and cut it out so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Perfect, it's done. It's prompting me to unload. I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to keep this mat and I'll show you why momentarily. So it's a little hard to see on the camera, but this is where it has cut out my decal. So I'm going to go ahead with my scissors and just trim around. The tools I'm using today are the little scissors. I'm also using what they call the weeding tool, which is like a little pick. It kind of looks like a dental pick. And then it has a little scraper. Now your scissors have a little cap on it, so just pull off that cap. So these are what I'm using for my vinyl project. And these, along with a few others, came in the basic toolkit that it comes with in the bundle. But you can also purchase it separately. So this is just the super basic toolkit. It's really helpful and I highly recommend you get that at least. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the little Cricut cutie here. And the reason I do that is I can still use the rest of this vinyl. Vinyl can, you know, be expensive sometimes. So I do this and I can use this sheet for another project. So now I have my two different ones. So for now, I'm going to set this little guy to the side. I just want to work on one at a time. So what I'm going to do is stick it down on my mat. Now the reason for this is it's going to hold it on the mat. So when I'm doing the method called weeding, which means removing the parts that we do not want on our decal, so the middle of the letters, the background, that type of thing. And if you're having troubles with it coming up, you could use your little pick, your weeding tool, to kind of guide it and push it back down. Sometimes your letters that you do want to keep in your decal start coming up when you pull and that's okay don't panic you could just push it back down with your little tool there are ways to make weeding a lot easier which i have a video about that but i think the biggest tip i could give you is just go slow and if you aren't able to peel it all up at once like me that's okay it normally isn't that easy as i just did it i just used a very large bold font if you're using a very thin font it's a lot harder so if you're starting out I would use something bold and large to make it easier and then you just use your little pick to take out the middle parts now the reason i have it on the mat is if i try to weed it on here it's just going to be sliding around a lot harder than when it's stuck down so this you can go ahead and throw away i don't have a garbage so i'm just going to leave it there for now this is what they call transfer tape this is cricut transfer tape so what i'm going to do is cut this to the same size as my decal now, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't normally use Cricut transfer tape. Um, there are a lot of like dupes and hacks to it, but for today's video, I thought I would show you using the Cricut transfer tape because I'm sure that's what you have. Cricut transfer tape is very sticky, and so sometimes you can have a little bit of trouble getting your decal off of it. So I suggest you take it, stick it down on your jeans or your pants first, just get a little bit of that stick off, okay? Don't worry about the step if you just want to go ahead, but it will help a lot with it not having your vinyl stick so good on here that you cannot get it off. So now I'm just going to lay it over top. So make sure your full decal is covered, the vinyl part of it. It doesn't matter if the paper backing is not covered. 
and then you take your little scraper tool and you scrape across it. And so this is trying to transfer it onto the tape, transfer tape. And now I'm using my little weeding tool to lift it up. So a trick to make this easier, because look, when I peel it, oh, it's not coming up. What's going on? It's okay, push it back down. Add a little bit more pressure. You could even flip over the mat and do the same thing on this side. But a way that's really helpful is pull, get your little tool or your nail, pull the whole entire thing off like so, and then flip it over. And we're going to pull away. So pull the paper backing away slowly. You could do it um, laying down if you need to. Pull the paper backing really slowly. If it starts coming up, just push it back down. Use your finger to add more pressure or your little scraper. Don't panic, like, you'll be good even if it pulls up. So now we have it onto our little transfer sheet. So that's my decal. And now I'm able to add it to my Cricut Maker. Honestly, just going to eyeball it, but go ahead and use your ruler if you want to measure it out. Awesome, so I like that. So I place it down. Now the thing with this is it's super sticky, the vinyl. So once you place it down, it is a little tricky to pull it back up if it's not where you want. So just go really slow and then go ahead and do your little scrape. Now this works the same technique if you're adding it to a car, a mug, a tumbler, a wall, and anything like that. You're using the same method that I'm showing you here, the transfer tape. So once it's on there, I'm going to go ahead and start peeling very slowly. If it starts coming back up, that's okay. Like I said, just push it back down, get your little scraper and go again. So we're peeling it up very slowly from one side and that's it. It's on there. You just made your first decal. Isn't that cute? So this transfer tape you can actually reuse. You could keep your little, oops, there it is. You could keep your little sheet for it and stick it back on for the next project. And I'm telling you this because this can be expensive if you're just going to use it once. <laughs> so the next one I'm going to do is this little Cricut Cutie and I'm going to put it right up here. I wanted to show you a font and a little image because some people might not want to do a font. They might just want to go right to the image. So let's do that one next. We're going to do the exact same process. So if you don't want to see it again, that's okay. Go ahead and skip on over to the next part. But that's pretty much it, honestly, for the tutorial. So I just wanted to show you this one if you're doing an image. Now, weeding an image can be a little bit different than the letters because you know, with the letters, we know that the middle of the A comes out or the middle of the letter D. With the image, it's a little bit trickier. So you really have to kind of think about what part you're wanting in it. So right now I'm taking out part of the eyes so that the little hearts in the middle, I'll show you, are still in there. Do you see that? So it does take a little bit more, I guess, um, attention to know which parts to pull out. Sometimes I do the wrong parts, have to go ahead and recut it. It's not a huge deal. Now, when it comes to, I'm using permanent adhesive vinyl. So if you're adding it on a mug or anything like that, I know I'm gonna get questions asking, do you need to seal it so that it is, um, you know, you can use it, the decal's not gonna come off. Or if you add it to a car, you could seal it if you want to. It's more personal preference, but I use permanent adhesive vinyl. So with that, you don't really need to seal it. Um, for example, I have a decal on my car with this same vinyl and we have very cold snowy winters and very hot summers. And the decal is still just as vibrant and stuck on there as it was what, three or four years ago. So um, I would say that you don't need to seal it, but there are different ways to care for that item. So if I put vinyl on a mug, I can no longer put it in the dishwasher unless I seal it. Um, if I put a vinyl on a mug and don't seal it, uh, well, you can't put it in the microwave either way. Um, you can't soak it in hot water or like scrub it because it's called permanent vinyl. But if you really wanted to, you could take something sharp and scrape it off. I've done that. You know, I'll have a decal and then I decide, oh, I don't really like it anymore. I'll just scrape it off and make a new one. So there is a, it's called permanent, but 
there is a way to take it off if you really want to. It's not really that hard. So I'm going to take the same transfer tape. It's way larger, but it's okay, I can just reuse it. I'm going to lay it over top, same method. Take my little scraper, get it on there. If you're still watching this part, I think it's good because now you're really going to see the methods being used and that repeat step is really going to help you. So it's actually just coming up already. I didn't even have to flip it over. That was pretty easy. So now we can go on over and add it to our Cricut machine. I'm going to be adding it right up here, I think. Or I add it down here. Which one? Which one do we think? Up here, down here. Hmm. So I'm going to do the same method. And then slowly, see it's coming up the little foot. I'm going to push it back down with my finger, add pressure, and there we go. Pull slowly. And it's on there. That's so cute. Okay, awesome. So again, I can still reuse this. So I'm going to stick it back down for next project that I'm going to be working on another day. Put it away and voila. So the reason that was so easy to pull off was because I stuck it down on my pants a couple of times first. If you're using a Cricut brand one, highly suggest you do that because it's very sticky and you might have troubles pulling it up otherwise. So that's what we just made. I really like how it came out. Super cute. I am loving it and I'm so excited to get crafting. So if you have any questions or any specific tutorials you want to see how to do, please leave them down below and I would be happy to do those for you or answer any of those. And I hope this gave you some motivation and inspiration to open your Cricut and get started because I promise once you get started, you're going to love it. The beautiful things you can make like I mean, my craft room is just full and my house is just full of things that I've made and it's so much fun. It's really honestly therapeutic to craft, like de-stressing and helps with anxiety and things. So highly recommend you look into it. In the meantime, I have tons more Cricut content on TikTok and YouTube. So please feel free to subscribe, check out some of my other videos, and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now, crafters.